Gauteng city. This is from Gauteng. All right. All right, we look at the items that we see here. Uh, question number one, fairly bought the instruments below to monitor her temperature. So take the pictures below and answer the questions that for So they say, name the instruments represented above. The instruments represented above are for the thermo. Thermometers. Thermometer. Round off with the, with the digit reading from instrument B above or the nearest 10. So this is it, nearest 10. So the answer is, sorry, they said 37, comma, zero, comma, zero, seven degrees. So to the nearest 10 becomes what? 40 degrees worth Celsius. Which instrument A or B displays the lower reading? So B, it's in between 20, 20, 22, 24. So it's C, instrument A. Randy uses the two types of clocks below to manage time. Use the, use the, information displayed on the clocks to answer the questions that follow all right uh this is called analog and this other side is the digital one all right analog and digital then what time is this this one it is supposed to be 11 50 54 from this side here 11.54, because it will soon be coming to. Okay. Write down the time on clock D in words. D is this one here, which is 8 past 12. You can write and say in words it's 8 minutes. Past twelve in the afternoon. Express the clock on the on clock C in twenty four hour system. Clock sits here in twenty four hour system since displayed time morning, so it will still be. 11, someone made says 53, 54, it's not yet 55. Ready wants to visit, okay, went to visit, a lady went to visit her mother in Nailsbridge, she left home at the time displayed on C and arrived, and arrived at the time displayed on D. So this is the start time. And this is the end time. What are they asking? Or oh, how long did she travel? So remember we say this is find out the duration. This is duration. Duration will equal to the end time minus the start time, which became uh, the end time is D. The one in D it's 12. 12 hours, 8 minutes, minus the time, which is it's the starting, which is 11, 54. End up having an answer closer to 16 minutes or 15.
14 minutes. Fourteen minutes. Here we go. They say Peredi went to the local university to apply for bursary. She used the map on Annexure A. Find the local university to apply. Try to find the university. Study the map on Annexure A and answer the questions that follow. Identify the national road found on this map. Let's go to the next year. The national road found on this map. This is the next year. Eh? The national road, it's this one here, N4. We have N4. We write it there, national road 4. Then write down, okay, what is the general direction of pick and pay from Formula 1 hotel? Simply meaning someone is in Formula 1 and it's going to pick and pay. Formula 1, let's see here. Formula 1, it's this one. Formula 1, it's this one here. And take note, look at where the north is. That means the northern part is this. So if this is your north, so this is your north. So from here, you take north. Northeast. North east. So here we shall say north. North east. How many street sets of street lights will she pass when traveling from Enzo to Mabusa Street to Swane College to Swane University? University. So we are the mm, they say a message of really from. Enzo, Mabusa Street. From here to there. So we have these are two, these are four, these are two. So the answer becomes eight. Eight sets. In which general, which direction should Baha drive if she is traveling from Robin Ferry to hospital to the university? Which direction is it? It's from here. Yeah, the person will take the southern way because this is north, south is this other side. So it will be the southern direction. Southern direction. Question number two. Mpo and Mantla are traveling together from Kruger's Dock to Pretoria to attend a meeting to organize mathematical literacy Olympia. Set the map in the next year B and answer the following questions. Which neighboring province?
Let's go and we look at the map. All right, this is the map and they ask us which neighboring province is situated to the south of Haute. South of, if this is north, the south is this other side. But the neighboring state, it's free state. Free, free state. Identify the scale shown on the map. We come here. This is the scale shown. This is a bar graph. Bar scale, sorry. The bar scale name the last town they will pass before they reach Pretoria. You see, it's a centurion. Look here. They are from here, but this, this, this one here is the last town. Before you reach Pretoria. So here the answer is supposed to be Centurion. The last time the last town met is Centurion. After the meeting, Marshall decided to visit his friend Brock's street. Spirit. He detailed with write down write in detailed instructions of to direct him from Pretoria to Bronx Street. Bronx Street. Write down, write detailed instructions to direct him from Pretoria to Bonk Spirit. Uh, this will be from Pretoria Tech. Take N4 on your right arm, your right hand. How many toll gates will Marsha pass on his journey from Kruger's Dog 2? So here we see it's only one because it's Kruger's Dog way here. He has to move to the end of the entry. So there we go. Then there is this from the up to this. There's only one T. Yes. Yeah, we said it's one. One tall, one tall gate. It's this one here, only this one. There's no any other. Okay, the actual straight line distance from Google to, to wrong spirit. What you're going to do, you take a ruler, then you measure. Take a ruler, then you measure. Take a ruler, then you measure.
uh, we are measuring from Kruger's Dope to Bronx Street, Street Lane. So for one photo of Kruger's Dope to the other. Yeah. Yeah. These answers will change according to our rulers. I have, I have measured and I've got 90 millimeters. This is the distance I've measured, but it's not yet actual. 90 millimeters, it's not yet actual. So how do we just turn it into actual? I'll go and measure also the distance on the scale. The bus scale, I'll measure the bus scale. This is the first I've measured. I've measured the distance. I measured the distance from here to straight. I go to the answers. I go to the answers in 90 millimeters. Then I should come also here and measure my distance. I'll measure from here up to there. So when I measure from zero to 75, I have, I have six, 60 millimeters. Simply meaning the 60 millimeters are equivalent to 75 kilometers. Okay, we need now to go back and we change the distance. So we've seen that uh, if you have, if you have 60 millimeters, you have a, a distance of 75 kilometers. So cross multiply and you get nine, times divided by six ninety times seventy five divided by sixty. So I have the answer as this much. One hundred twelve comma five kilometers. Mbo decided to take a bus from Johannesburg to Bloemfontein. The bus stopped twice for twenty minutes each time. It stopped. So in other words, it has spent 40, 40 minutes. The bus departed at uh, twenty past seven and arrived in Bloemfontein at eleven thirty. She claimed that they were. They were traveling at an average speed of 120 kilometers. Verify the claim. Number one. Oh, they told us to use an extra C. So before we verify the claim, we need to know the time that was spent. So we shall take the time they arrived, which is 11.30, minus the time they left, which is what? 7.20. Here we have 10 minutes, and here we have for minutes. Remember, this person spent 20 minutes stopping, so the bus was not traveling. So we say the time spent minus 40 minutes. Minus 40 minutes. Now, when you subtract the 40 minutes, what do you remain with? This could be 330. Subtract the 40 minutes from here, you remain with 3 that change this to hours. So this will become 3,5 hours. How do, these are minutes, I need. I had to change them to, 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 to hours. So it's a three hours plus the 30 divided by 60. Why am I dividing by 60? I want also this to become hour. Okay, let's go to our next chart. Next year C, this is the next year C. So we've got the time, which is three and a half hours. So we need to prove speed. Remember speed, we said it will always be. Is the triangle there? Please don't forget it. 
we try to s equals to b over t so our speed here should be distance over time do we have the distance no but they told us to use an extra c uh the distance you're looking for is johannesburg and bloomfontein we go to the this is bloomfontein you scroll down where does it meet johannesburg so this is the distance covered distance this is bloom when does it meet this is the distance it's 398 so we shall say 398 divided by 3.5 so we have 113.5 So it's correct. The verification, sorry, the their calculation is what? Correct. All right, this marks the end of question number two. Question number three. We look at question number three. Shaylee has a, a, a catering company and she bought an run to prepare tea for her customers. She uses a bucket to fill up the run and the dimensions of the run uh, and the dimensions of the bucket are indicated below. Study the information below and answer the questions that follow. All right, he bought a neuron and he bought a neuron and um, this, okay, the, uh, the neuron, it takes a cylindrical shape and the bucket takes a rectangular shape. All right, what do, what do we see here? We see the neuron, it's already given to us here. This will be the diameter. This part here is the diameter. This part here, it's the diameter this is a height only for the base but then they have told you when you look at this look at the scenario here we have the height of the run excluding the lead is 380 millimeters so the height is from these handles when up to down here the height is 380 millimeters but in the end, you will need to change it to centimeters because we have these centimeters also here. So we shall look at that. Anyway, let's continue and we see. Define the term volume. Volume, 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 volume. Right there we go. We say volume. Volume is the space, space occupied by an object. You know, volume and capacity, they are two different. Space occupied, for example, if you get a box, you put it in a, a corner, how much space does it take? That's what you're looking. But now Capacity will be how much can that box hold? How much can that box hold? Those are two different things. Space inside the box is capacity. Outside, how much space does the box? Uh, how much space does the box take? It's supposed to be volume. All right. Determine the height of the bucket rounded off to the nearest centimeter. These are six marks. All right. Take note. For us to determine 
or we in, because now we are the bucket we are looking at the bucket and the bucket is what rectangular the bucket is rectangular so they have given the formula that they used ask yourself do you have the volume of the bucket because we already have the breadth and we have the length the height is missing the height is missing so this part here from here up to down the this it's what is missing so we're going to use the volume we use the length we use the breadth and we shall look for the height anyway let's continue and we say since we okay the bucket the volume of the bucket is 18,46 liters so we shall change the 18,4 liters into centimeters using this fact here so the volume of this bucket here it will be the volume will equal to 18,46 multiplied by a thousand. The reason why I'm multiplying by a thousand, I want it to become centimeters cubed. When I multiply by a thousand, I will end up having 18,460. These are centimeters cubed. Well and good, I've converted now. I'll come and substitute into the formula. So the volume is. 18,460, giving me the length of 30, the breadth of 22 times the height of the unknown. All right, let's continue. So simply meaning, simply meaning, we are saying, uh, they give the volume of the bucket. They give the volume of the bucket in form of liters, which was 18,46 liters. Change these liters to centimeters cubed. How do we do that? We shall get the 18,46 times 1,000. So the answer here became... 18,460 centimeters what? cubed. All right. So we already know the length as 30 centimeters. We know the breadth as 22 centimeters. The height is missing. So they have told you they got their volume by L times B times H. Substitute in the V is volume is 18,460 equals to the length, which is 30, times the breadth, which is 22, times what? H. When I multiply 22 times, when I multiply 22 times 30, I get 660, 660 what? H. Either we are looking for the H, so we shall divide through by 660, divide through by 660 on both sides. So my H became 8460 divided by 660. So my H is 27,96. This set to the nearest centimeter, which becomes 28 centimeter so the height is 28 centimeter all right so the height there is 28 centimeters you're asking us show that the circumference of the room is uh, 138 comma 248 centimeters circumference definitely i told you this is our diameter which is okay so how do you get the circumference? The circumference have told us we shall take pi times d, which is d stands for the diameter. So we shall come here and say 3,142 times 44. We shall take 3,142 times 
Le comma, 1, 4, 2, times 42, sorry, 44. 44, so 3, 142 times 44. The answer indeed is, the answer is 138,248. These are centimeters since it's a circumference. All right, here we go. Charlie boiled the water and wrapped the outer part of the urine, the steel part, with foil. What is the importance of wrapping the outer part? So one might say to keep to keep uh, the water warm, keep the water warm. Someone might say for insulation, for insulation, insulation simply meaning you cover something and you prevent it from losing heat. Someone might say uh, to prevent to prevent heat, heat loss, heat loss. Ne? All right, determine the radius of this. The urine, we said radius will always equal to diameter divided by two. We've already seen the diameter is 44. We divide that by two, and the answer became 22. These are centimeters. Hence, calculate the area of the urine, which was covered with a foil. Remember, let's go back to the diagram here a little bit. Now we are going, we are looking for this area here, from here up to here. This is the area that we are looking at. You see that? We are not looking at the base. So this is what I told you. Now we, when we come here, they have given us a formula. Pi, sorry, 2 pi r times h. All right? So 2 pi r times h. So the h is going to be this distance here, which will be 38 minus 4. Why are we subtracting the 4? Because from up here up to down, it's a 380 millimeters. Change it to centimeters, we get 38 centimeters. You see that? Of the 38 centimeters, remove the bottom, which you remain, we remain with 34. All right. So our height now is 34 because we're only looking at the silver covering. So here we shall say area equal to 2 times pi, which is 3,142 times the radius, which is 22 times the height, which we've just got as 34. Get up? 34. We want the answer in centimeters. Everything is in centimeters. Let's continue and we shall say. So 22, sorry. 2 times 3,142 times 22 times 34. The answer becomes, the answer became 4,743 centimeters squared. Hence, calculate the area of the urine that will be covered with the foil, the silver, the silver part, the steel part, either that one there, it's going to be covered by the urine, which is in other words, we are ins insulating. Determine the volume of the urine. Now they told you the volume, volume will equal to pi r squared, which is 3,142 times, what's the radius? The radius is 22 squared, times now the height the height of the urine is going to be the height of the urine is going to be 38 it's fine 38 is fine volume but when you look at it critically it's, it cannot be 38 why because the base does not carry water Right, the base car is the uh, the boiling part, but the water starts from here, away to this part here. That's where the silver part is. Anyway, so a ladder will use thirty four, and we shall end up having our answer as three comma one four two times 
22, don't forget to square, times 34, times 34. So here the answer that we get is, the answer that we get is, the answer we have, we have 51,704, comma, seven, five centimeters cubed. Don't forget that, right? Shall we use the bucket to refill the urine? Then the bucket holds 18, comma, 18, comma, for six liters of water. Determine the number of buckets needed to refill the empty urine. Then we shall say this. We shall take the volume of the urine of the volume of the urine divided by the volume of the bucket. Because we are looking for how many buckets will fill up. So the volume of the urine is 51,000. 704,75 divided by divided by the reason why I have this this is in centimeters cubed so I had also to change this to centimeters cubed so I got the answer there as fifty one thousand seven hundred and four comma seven five Divided by 18,460. So I have 2, 2,8. I have 2,8. I have 2,8. I have 2,8. So these, remember we are looking for buckets. These are approximately three buckets. The third one, you won't use it fully. The third one, you won't use it fully. All right. Question number, question number four. Question number four says, Sipo, Sipo owns a bakery and makes and sells bread and cakes to the local community. A first selling item is banana bread with custard. The recipe to prepare the banana bread is indicated below. Study the recipe. And below, answer the questions that follow. Convert seven inches to centimeters. We shall use this convert, this factor here. Uh, this will be if one inch equals to 2,54 centimeters. What about the seven inch? What will they be? So it will be seven times 2, seven times 2, which becomes 17, 17, 73 centimeters all right um petrols we we look at uh, 25 kilograms of sugar and the person claims that this can prepare banana bread to serve more than a hundred people more than 150 people that's the claim. So let's see if the claim is valid. So we need to verify the claim. Here we go. Uh, we say, I'm answering 4.1.4, 4. Uh, 100, 150, Uh, 
we go to the next here we have this is the sugar that we are looking at this sugar here serves eight people so how much do we need for 100 and okay we see how much shall we need now we shall come here and say if 150 grams they are for eight people 150 grams are for eight people 150 grams are for eight people eight people then we shall ask ourselves what about if you have because now he bought two comma five kg how many grams will this be we shall change this to uh, by multiplying it by that which becomes two thousand grams we shall ask ourselves about this 2500 grams how many people will it serve so we shall multiply by that we end up 200 sorry 2500 times 8 divided by 150 2500 times 8 you get 20,000 divided by 150 you have 133,33 so it, it can only serve so the claim is valid the claim is invalid the claim is invalid. Uh, someone else would have changed. Someone else would have changed. So the other one would be, uh, we would change the 150 grams, we change it to kilograms by dividing by a thousand. So the answer would become 0, 0,1. 0, 0,15 0, 0,15 these are edges these ones they serve eight people all right what about if someone has 2,5 kg what will it be so you would have changed that and you say, still we shall call this letter, any letter of our choice. Cross multiply, one comma, sorry, 0, 0,15, 0, 0,15 kg times the unknown letter equals to 2,5 times eight, all right? 2,5 times 8, you end up having 20. Is a 20. Then we divide through by 0, 0,15. So 20 divided by 0, 0,15 still get the same answer. So remember, we are looking for the number of people. So these are the people. The unknown even closer to 150. The claim was it will serve more than 150. This is not more than 150. So the claim is valid. This is question 4.1.4, this one here. So the claim is invalid. All right. We come to express the amount of sugar. Express the amount of sugar to butter in a simplified ratio. Let's go up there. Butter is 75 grams, sugar is 150. In that manner, I will like, I will come here and say 150 is to 75. I divide through by the smallest, I will end up having 2 is to. Mm, 2 is to 1. 
simply meaning wherever you have two parts of sugar, you have one part of butter. That's what it simply means. Question number 4.2. I'll use this, the addendum here. This is the addendum that we're looking at. Yes, they're telling us they're telling us uh, Sipo lives in the Cradock and travels every weekend via Enton on Sea to the restaurant in East London. He claims that his return trip covers a thousand kilometers. So remember, mm -hmm. return trip, it's going and coming back to and fro. So we are going to multiply the distance covered. But take note of the place we have Cradock uh, via and on, on, uh, on C, then up to East London. Let's go there and you see. Uh, the person is here. Yes, the person is here. Sorry, the person is going through this part here. Then he comes to this. He does not stop. He goes up to East London. So, here the distance covered is 190 to so put it aside, 193 plus. This is from here up to this distance. Now, from the road here up to here, it's 74. We shall add 74. From this town, can so we go to up Port Alfred, which is 24. Then from Port Alfred to East London, they're telling us it's 158. You add 158. See that? So when you add 193 plus 74 kilometers plus 24 kilometers plus 158, you end up having 449. These are the kilometers covered. But this is only one, uh, uh, one trip. Well, it's going only. Then when you're coming back, multiply by 2. And we shall end up having 800, 890. So the statement is invalid. Statement is invalid. The statement is invalid. You remember? We said we shall take the distance from East London. We add on 74. We add. 24, then we had 158. These are the distances covered. So we ended up having the distance as 449. These are kilometers. Multiply by 2, the answer became 898 kilometers. This is not a thousand, so it's invalid. The claim is what? Invalid because it says the trip covers a thousand kilometers. No, it's less than a thousand kilometers. And he said the distance is less than a thousand kilometers, then the, the statement would be valid. Uh, 4.3, we are looking at this, this probability still. And again, they brought a, a tree diagram. Sipo also works a catering company for. Oh, Sipo also owns a catering company. For dessert, clients can choose from the following options. The best, it has two options. It's either banana or marvel. Then top, it's either yogurt or custard. Then decorations, either strawberries or chocolate flanks. Yes, yeah. and so you expect to have, we have, expect, expect to have, uh, you expect to have the, the the what? The, the you expect to have the the branches. One it will be for the base. So the base is either bread or pudding. Then this has to split again. You either get yogurt or custard. Yogurt or custard. Then it has to split again. 
either get strawberries or maybe strawberries or maybe this you know it goes on splitting all right they're saying in the tree diagram next year e represents the different options of the desired study so, uh sorry of the desired study the three diagram sorry the tree diagram Study the tree diagram and answer the questions that follow. Complete the tree diagram by using the values of i by writing, not using, by writing the values of i, Roman numeral 1 and Roman numeral 2. Let's go to the diagram and we see. This is how it looks like. Together. So, what you take note of, this is the base. This is already done. It's fine. So here we are looking at the, it's, it was called the what? The top. We look at the top. These are the tops. Remember the tops we either have yogurt or custard. Yogurt. But another thing is that you look at the second branch. So this is complete. Nothing is missing. That means also here what's missing? It's a Y. Then when you come to this, it's either uh, strawberry or mave, strawberry or mave, strawberry or so you also look at the others. You see, they all have s s. Also, use here what is missing is what s. So we go back to the question. So here, i it's y, and this is s. How many possible outcomes are present? Sorry, how many possible outcomes are represented in the tree diagram? Go to the diagram. Let's look at the possible outcomes we have. Uh, this would be B, Y, S. Here we have B, Y, M. We might have B, C, S, B, C, M. Here we can have P, Y, S. Then we have P, Y, M. We have P, C, S. We have P, C, M. So how many possible outcomes do we have? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we have the possible outcomes that we have here are 8. Out of the 8, what's the probability that of choosing a dessert with banana base? So we shall look at, out of the 8, which one starts with the B? So we have one, two, three, four. So we shall come down here and we shall say four out of eight. Don't forget, leave it as simplified form, which is a half. Yeah, they ask for this small, it would be 0 0.5 percentage, it would be 50 percent. This marks the solution. This marks the end of our solution.